Hare Krishna, spur of the moment recording. I would like to first of all wish everyone a happy Janmashtami. I'm here live and direct, Miss Elmhurst, Sun Man Patu. Here's she, she. We're gonna start at the feet, right? I'm gonna cover her foot because actually, you're not. I'm giving you all a little darshan of Krishna. And he was doing something with Radha's feet because you know, some men. They like to play with their women's body, you know, or their feet or whatever, whatever, you know, makes them feel good. But actually, it's offensive to look at the feet of Srimati Radharani. Her feet is only for Krishna, you know, something I learned. Today is Janmashtami, the appearance day of the Supreme Lord. Our Supreme Lord, in his original form, visits this planet, this universe, every day of Brahma, which comes out to about 8.64 billion years or every millennium in Brahma's day and when he does come to this universe and blesses this universe with the dust with the touch of his lotus feet the very nature of the molecules and the atoms they turn themselves inside out because material energy is darkened condensed external separated energy but behind the material manifestation is the spiritual energy. So the true nature of everything that's material is originally spiritual. So when Krishna came to this universe to perform his loving pastimes and his pastimes of vanquishing and his pastimes of deliverance, when he came here, the very atomic structure of the universe turned itself inside out. So actually, even though Kali Yuga, this age we live in, in is real rough, it is actually the most blessed Kali Yuga out of the last 71 Manvantaras. Don't ask me to describe how long a Manvantara is. It's ridiculously long. And out of the last 71 Manvantaras, this is the most fortunate Kali Yuga. Because this is the one where Sri Krishna was here right at the beginning, or should I say at the end of Dwapara Yuga, right before Kali Yuga age began. As soon as Kali Yuga age began, that's when Krishna left this planet. But today is the day of his appearance. But that's not what this video is about. This video is not about the appearance of Krishna. I just wanted to separate the fool from the learned with this video. The age of the speculators is done. Y'all need to sit down. You don't know nothing. You need to accept information from those who gave you this information from the spiritual world, not written by the hands of man. We don't deal with information written by the hands of man. We don't deal with guesswork from the brains of man. So it's a lot of people out there talking this spiritual stuff, like they're learned and all of that. They cannot take you to the spiritual world if they don't even know the components of the material universe that they live in. So therefore, I would like to share with you some information about the structure of your local universe. I would like for you to take a moment and think about a CD case. The spindle is there in the middle and you have all of these discs, these empty DVD ROMs are there. We'll take out all of the DVD ROMs, just leave seven. Okay, just leave seven discs there. And we're gonna begin here. The first sphere. First of all, your universe is like an egg. And this egg, this cosmic egg, has different layers in it. There are people now who believe that the earth is flat because they are misinterpreting Vedic information. Vedic information is specific in that the sun and the sunset are in diametric opposition to each other. So when the sun is rising on one part of the planet, it's falling on the other part of the planet. Therefore, your earth is a globe. The scriptures describe the planet earth as a globe. It's all described as a globe. There are layers to the universe that you live in. Seven layers to this universe. Divided into 14 planetary systems of three main groups. You have Rajasic planets or the middle planetary system. You have Tamasic planets or the lower planetary systems. And you have Sattvic planets. And that's the upper planetary system. All of this information can be corroborated by the Bhagavad Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Fifth Canto explains the exact structure of your universe, the different races that inhabit your universe, the distance of these various planets from the central sun, the combination of the pole star. So let's go back to the discs now. The spindle, that thing that the CD-ROMs go down on, consider that to be the axis of the universe, the top of which would be the pole star or Druva Loka. Okay, good. So we have the spindle, we have the spine, we have the jet pillar of the universe is firmly established. Let's deal with the lowest realm. In the Kubera Gayatri Mantra, you say Om Bur. Burlok. What is Burlok? Burlok is the earthly planetary systems of which Bumi is the Devi. Mother Goddess, Mother Earth Goddess is the name of the first sphere. So take that CD disc and put it down on the spindle. That is Om Bur or Om Bu Bur Bur Lok. The next CD would represent, you put that down on top of that. That's the next sphere. So remember, your planet is round, but the sphere in which it is located, the region of the universe in which it is located is flat. The next sphere, Om Bur, Om Bhuvaha. So you have Bhuvarlok. Om Swaha is the next disc. That's Swargalok. Very interesting place. You can look these places up. Swargalok. S V A R G A L O K A. Swargaloka. Please look it up. After Om Swaha is Om Maha, a planet called Maharlok. Put the next disc down. After Om Maha is Om Janaha, Janalok. After Janalok, you have Om Tapaha, and that is Tapalok, where they do penances and austerities. And then last but not least, the highest of the planetary systems is Om Satyam or Satyalok. This is just the basic construction of your temporary material cosmos. But taking it further, it gets very interesting. So you get to the eggshell or you get to the coconut shell. Now, as you know, this material universe is composed of what? 24 elders, the 24 elements, 24 energies. I'm not going to run those down for you, but I'll give you some example. Some of them are your five senses, and some of them are the five energies related to those five senses, like scent, taste, touch, etc. So that deals with the number 10. And then you have like the moving organs. Like, so you have the ability to speak, vocal cords. You have the ability to hold, hands. You have the ability of locomotion, to move with the feet. They just went to the library. Eh? They just went to the library. Okay. Yeah, they right there at the library. Okay. All right. You have the ability to hold. You have locomotion, the legs, right? And then you have organs of elimination, like the anus, urethra. And then you have organs of generation, which is your genitals. So once you combine all of these energies together and, and the ones that I didn't mention, it comes up to the number 24, representing the 24 elders in the book of Revelations. But this material universe has eight basic elements. The basic elements being your fire, your water, your earth, your air, and your ether. Your mind is a subtle element, your intelligence is a subtle element, and your false ego is also a subtle element. I have not mentioned anything spiritual yet. When you get to the eggshell of this universe, it gets real interesting. Because on the first outer rim of this universe, you have a ring of earth. 